Now let's take a look at copper one sulfate. We see sulfate clearly ends with an eight, so we know this is a polyatomic ion. We see, huh, there is a Roman numeral here. So whatever is in front of this Roman numeral, we know from, from previous tutorials that this is a variable charged metal. Specifically, it's a variable charged transition metal. So we follow the exact same steps, copper and sulfate. Sulfate has a charge, a fixed charge of negative two. Copper, in this case, the one tells us that it's a plus one charge metal. We crisscross the superscripts with the subscripts. Again, we parenthesize the sulfate show, to show that this is one unit. The one drops down here, but there's no need to have to write the one, so that's why the one is not there. Um, and we then see if there's any simplification needed. We can't simplify two and one any simpler, so we're gonna leave it as two atoms of copper are bonded to one unit of sulfate. So clearly in the past two examples, we could see that there are two types of bonds that are occurring in this compound. First of all, like we have mentioned before, all of the polyatomic ions are covalently bonded together. So inside this parentheses, there are covalent bonds. However, this one unit of sulfate is bonded to two units of copper. So you have two units of copper, atoms of copper that's bonded to this one unit of sulfate. Copper are, they're metals, right? Sulfate, this whole unit are covalently bonded together. So this whole unit you can imagine is covalent. It's like a non-metal. So when a metal is bonded to this whole covalent unit of non-metals, that bond is going to have to be ionic. Similarly, the other copper with this unit of sulfate, that's going to be ionic as well. And so because of that, there exists in this compound ionic bonding between the copper and the sulfate and covalent bonding within the sulfate polyatomic ion.